Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. Thank you for joining us for Mark's Madness alongside Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, it is Districts Week. Right. We've made it and we were just talking about how this is one of the most exciting weeks of the year because a lot of games, a lot of local matchups, and we're a little bit unsure of how it's going to play out because this isn't quite like sectionals where we've got high seeds against low seeds. This, these are, we're whittling it down here, the best of the best. And let's begin by breaking it down in Division One with Lima Senior, who cruised to a sectional title and now will take on Whitmer in the district semis. Well, they beat Whitmer twice, Matt, and of course they've done it a couple of times without being at full strength. Rico Stafford didn't play one game. Thomas didn't play one game because of an injury to his foot. Upshaw didn't play a game because he was ill. So the Spartans have defeated Whitmer twice, but we're back to that same old concept. Can you beat a team three times in a season? And that will be a difficult chore for the Spartans going all the way up to Savage Hall in Toledo. X a little quieter against Fremont Ross this time. You know, he set the school record for scoring the first two times he played them. He's the main scorer on that team, but what's great about Lima Senior is they have athletes who can all have big nights. Yeah, they have tremendous balance, of course, but it starts with their defensive skills, and they've been pretty good at that defensively. They try to create turnovers. That was part of the key the other night against when they played Anthony Wayne. They had eight turnovers themselves in the second quarter. The game stayed close, but they forced nine turnovers in the fourth quarter to the Spartans and, and got control of the basketball game. And they will need to play a consistent four quarters this week. So if they get past Whitmer, yep. it'll be the winner of Northview and St. John's. Now, Northview beat Finley, yep. and of course, we know Toledo St. John's Lima Senior has beaten twice already this season. Well, let's look at Northview first because that's kind of the unknown to all of us. They've played five track teams this year. They've won twice. They beat Clay, and then they beat Finley in the tournament, but they have lost to a Whitmer, St. Francis, and Toledo Central Catholic. So they're maybe not as a, the level that we would think of. I would think St. John's will be favored, but certainly a rival-type game there. The Spartans have beaten St. John's by a point. They also beat them by eight uh, later on in the season. That was a home game. And again, the Spartans did not shoot the ball particularly well in either one of those two games. They made just three three-point field goals in each of the two games. They typically make more than that. They'll need to shoot better this week. So Spartans still the favorite in the UT district as we now right. will move to Division Two in our WBL district, which yeah. will go down at <laughs> ONU. Wapak beat Salina and then yep. lost to Upper Sandusky. Van Wert beat Bryan, then lost to Ottawa Glendorf. Kenton beat St. Mary's. We're going back to sectional games to recap here. And then lost to Defiance. And Elida beat Bath and then beat Shawnee. So the Bulldogs deserve credit for reaching the districts, don't they? They really do. And I think it's been a really good improvement for Coach Thompson and his team. You know, at one point, they were 1-10 in the season. Now they're going to play in the district semifinals. So they've really done a nice turnaround. They're 9-4 in their last 13 games. Really nice job by Coach Thompson. Of course, Unruh has had a good second half of the season. They're getting good scoring inside from Stinson. And Josh Press has been pretty consistent throughout the years, making three balls from the perimeter and rebounding the basketball for them. The coach has done a really nice job bringing his team along. A little bit of a disappointing finish for Shawnee. Yeah. Jaden O'Neill did win the WBL Player of the Year honor, but Shawnee failed to win a playoff game, and I think Coach Tripwit and the team had higher expectations than that. Yeah, I would agree with that, and I think because the regular season went pretty well for them that they were expecting to do more, but this is an Elida team that has just continued to impress and continued to get better. One of those rival games that Elida had lost the regular season game with Shawnee earlier, Elida comes back and finds a way to win. So now we've got Ottawa Glendorf against Upper Sandusky, and we don't know much about Upper yeah. Sandusky, but we're learning more as we go along, and they're going to be a pretty formidable opponent for the Titans. Well, we know they have a 6'5", 210-pound post player in Miller, who shoots 66% from the floor. We talked about Wes Vent last week, who made, what, nine field goals from the three-point line out of nine attempts a, a couple of weeks ago against uh, Winford. And we know he's averaging better than 22 points a game. He shoots 43% for, for the season from the three-point line. They have an all-league point guard who averages five assists per game and, and a guy named Dival, not to be confused with the yeah. Dival at OG. Right. So they will be undefeated and a pretty good opponent for OG. If you look at, at their schedule, perhaps not the quality of competition that OG plays night in and night out, but you've got to be pretty good if you're undefeated. The other district semifinal has Bulldogs against Bulldogs, Elida and yeah. Defiance. Can Elida continue this run? Well, they can. It's going to be difficult, of course, because Coach Lehman's got uh, Singleton's back, and when he's back, that makes quite a difference. They're hoping to get Frederick back as well. He had mono. Strasburg's had another week to heal up from his back problems he had from a car wreck. So you would think that Defiance is starting to peak right now. It'll be a struggle for Elida, but that's why we play the games. Give me a prediction for this district. Who comes out of it? Somebody from the WBL, I think. I, I, really, <laughs> okay. think it, I really think it's OG and Defiance uh, in the finals. I think they will both succeed in the semifinals. And, and, you know, OG just really couldn't get ahead against the Defiance up there when Defiance shot the basketball so well. It might be OG's turn to win, but that's really too close to pick. 
All right, let's move on to Division All Three right. now and the Lima Senior District, yep. where we had a couple of upsets. It'll be Wayne Trace and Spencerville in one semifinal and LCC and Bluffton in the other. Now, Wayne Trace beat Allen East and then Delphus Jefferson. Big game for Ethan Linder, and he did it at the free throw line, right? Made 11 out of 13 free throws. Many of those were in the fourth quarter when Jefferson's trying to make a run back. They also held Trey Smith to just 12 points and shut him out in the fourth quarter, and that's a tremendous accomplishment for them defensively. So they really have played well at both ends of the floor in their semifinal game or in their sectional game. Delphus Jefferson's Trey Smith career comes to an end with 1,997 total points. He also became the NWC's all-time leading scorer last week. A tremendous career. It really is. Of course, he's going to go on to the Air Force Academy and wish him the best out there, and we certainly hope he succeeds out there. LCC and Bluffton. LCC cruised past Riverdale. At Riverdale beat Parkway. Right. We, no surprises there. Career high for Dantes in that game. I think it was 29. And then Bluffton beat Cary. They scored 99 in yeah. the sectional semis. And then upset Coldwater by one on a game-winning three in the sectional finals. Well, it's one of those things you got to wonder when Bluffton was going to do that. They've had so many close games throughout the year. I know they had an overtime win late in the season. They've had so many close losses, and they played so many different people tough. It was really glad to see a Coach Bobless team get a win there. And a big thing in this game for Bluffton was yes. scoring at the end of quarters. Well, let's take a look at this play in, in the basketball game and how important it is. This is a play a lot of schools run, but it works because of great execution. What we're going to see here as we get back into our instant replay look at it, the point guard has the basketball right here. Here comes the clear man through. The play looks like it's set up for this side of the floor, but instead we get the back cut here. We get the defender a little bit unaware, and we get a basket on perfect execution. Right there. Really nicely done. That gets them two points at the end of that particular quarter. And then we get one of those plays we talk about X's and O's and we also talk about Jimmy's and Joe's. Well, here's a Jimmy and Joe play right here. A jump shot from the free throw line, again, scoring at the end of the third quarter. That was rumor that made that particular shot. Watch the crossover dribble right here. Doesn't need to screen. And takes that jumper off of one foot. And then, of course, the big one at the end of the basketball game. And here you're in the situation, you know, we're down. Uh, two, do we go for two, do we go for three, and instead we get the three ball look out of the corner and bury it on ball reversal. We're going to take a second look at it, this time from our baseline camera. There's the jump shot, and again, that's going to put the Bluffton Pirates up a point. Want to finalize it. Here's the dribble penetration. This defender has to make a choice up here or in the corner. He makes the choice, which is probably most logical, and that's go right here to help out on that particular player, and then can't get back to the baseline in time and bury the jump shot, then they survive a last play, a last second out of bounds play and win the basketball game and the Pirates keep moving on. Exciting finish, Joel Seifker, the big shot, the yes. big man hitting the three. And now Bluffton will take on LCC, a, a tall order, the top yep. team in the state in Division Three. while Spencerville, who beat Marion Local, Spencerville will play Wayne Trace. Pretty intriguing district semis over there it, at Lima Senior. It really is, and if you think about what's happened, you know, Marion Local didn't shoot a free throw against Spencerville. Spencerville was 12 of 17, and they win the basketball game a little closer than when they played in the regular season. LCC is the favorite here, but they're not the prohibitive favorite. There are teams here that can compete with them, and the Thunderbolts will have to play well to get through this one. All right, let's stay in Division Three now, moving to the Napoleon District. Liberty Benton will play Tenora in the district semis, and Van Wert, or excuse me, Van Buren and Archibald will score off. Now, LB had no trouble with Patrick Henry. Tenora beat Paulding by one. Then Van Buren beat Montpelier, and Archibald beat Liberty Center in Elmwood. So LB on, and Van Buren seem like they're on track for a rematch. Do you think it's going to happen? And if it does, well, who do you like? Uh, let's just put I hope it's a rematch because it was such a great game in the regular season. Went overtime, 73-70 win for the Eagles. I hope it goes that way. The real key in that particular basketball game for Sony had just nine points, and that was through overtime as well. He, of course, is their key scorer. Kraft, of course, was player of the year in the Blanchard Valley Conference. He had a big basketball game, so it'll be a great matchup. That's number one seed and number two seed if it gets to that particular point. And as a fan, I hope it goes that way. I do as well. Rounding out Division Three now, Versailles yep. falls to Miami East by two. Good season for the MAC yep. champs, but it's done now. That's the Dayton District. And then Anna beat Franklin Monroe, but lost to Dayton Northridge by five. That's the Dayton 2 bracket, so both Division Three area Southwest District teams are now done for the season. They are, and we ought to say congratulations to Versailles. They were champions of the MAC this year, and Coach McElderney has resigned or was positioned after the game after 10 good years and a trip to the state tournament a couple years ago. Wish him the very best. 
All right, Division 4 now. Here's where we yep. got a lot of local teams and a lot of local matchups. Let's begin in the Wapak District where the top four seeds advanced out of sectionals. It'll be Perry versus Fort Recovery and St. Henry versus Minster. Which game will be closer? Well, I, I like Fort Recovery. I, I've seen them play, and I think they're going to give Perry all that they want. They're, they're a senior veteran team. These guys have played together for years. They've been a part of the college program before. Now they're the, the stars, I guess, if that's the way to, to phrase it. Micaiah Cox has really came along in the post. I, I think Perry's the favorite, but just how they're going to have to compete against a physical MAC team that Fort Recovery will be, that will be a very interesting basketball game. And on the other side, Minster St. Henry, a rematch from almost yeah. the very beginning of the season, December 11th, where the Wild Cats beat the Redskins, but these two teams pretty different than when they played the first time. It's a very, very long time ago, and of course Minster won that game, and, and you would think that St. Henry's had a little bit better season, at least record-wise, since that particular time, and of course the Stalman is coming along, he's a great player for them, Nixon of course from Minster, it'll be a really good matchup, and again, we're looking at three MAC teams matching up against Perry. And in the Elida District, where you and I will oh, have yeah. the call of a good right. district semifinal doubleheader tonight. Again, it's the top four seeds with Lincoln View versus Miller City and Crestview taking on Lipsick. Lincoln View will be without Trevor Neat, who's right. dealing with a foot injury. Miller City had a good win to get to this point. Crestview and Lipsick, a couple of teams riding long win streaks. Well, Lincoln View, of course, is going to have to overcome the loss of one of their key players in Neat. They'd like to get him back, but that's probably not going to happen, at least tonight in that particular game on Tuesday. So they'd like to get him back. Miller City can score, and they've been in the districts the last couple of years, and you got to wonder if maybe is, can this be the year that they pull the upset. One would think Lincoln View's the favorite, but missing a player, we're not sure. And I just think that Lipsick Crestview game will be an absolute great game. Both teams on winning streaks are playing very, very well right now. That second game it will be a great game tonight at the Elida. Now let's look ahead. Let's say the top two seeds do hold. Yeah. Can Crestview beat Lincoln View? They can. Let's look, go back and look at Cody Meffert didn't play the first time around. And, and this is a team that's very young, of course, in Crestview. And those guys have gotten some experience. And they've gotten better as the year goes along. You add Meffert in there, that could be a great basketball game. Again, Lincoln View and Crestview with that tremendous experience that Crestview's had going through tournament runs before. Lots of nice, of course, the NWC Player of the Year. That, that's a really good matchup, and I think Lincoln View will need, need Neat back and at near full strength for them to succeed. Looking forward to seeing how those ones play out at Elida. Also in Division Four, the Liberty Benton District, another one that held with the seeds. It'll be Macomb, North Baltimore, and New Regal and Arlington. So a couple more BVC teams in, the, in this district, and Arlington if they win, we could have another all BVC district final. I think there's two wild cards in there and two teams that might have to pull upsets. North Baltimore has Chad Wright who can just flat score the basketball. And when you have a guy like that, and he might dominate a basketball game and lead to a win over uh, McComb. They beat McComb in the regular season, obviously it's a while back, but that's going to be a really, really good matchup between seed two and seed four. And I think Arlington can get New Regal and set up that matchup that you talked about. It would not surprise me at all to see Arlington come out of that particular district. BBC pretty strong, especially at the top, and those teams are showing why here in the tournament. I, I really liked what Jason Familian does as a coach up there. His team seems to just get better as the year goes along. They could well be the, the team that comes out of this, even though they're the three seed. All right, back to the Southwest District. Yep. Now we're in Division Four. Fort Warmy reaches the district final, and they'll play Southeastern. Okay. You know, Rushi beat Layman Catholic, then lost to Fort Warmy in a great game at Pickle. It was 52-51. Yep. Do you like Warmy's chances to get to regionals? Well, what you got to like about Laramie is how they just keep finding ways to win basketball games. They lost twice to Rushi during the regular season. There's that third game matchup we yep. talked about, the problems that can be. They did win the close basketball game. Can they get there? They play Charles, South Charleston Southeastern, who is very, very good. They always are. And, the Jeeps always seem to find a way to compete well in the tournament, so that'll be a real struggle for Fort Laramie, but a really congratulations to get as far as they did and a chance to win one more. And another Shelby County League team still going strong. Jackson Center, the top seed in the Dayton 3 district. They'll play for a district title against Fairfield Christian. Tigers coming off the win over Fairlawn by two. And Fairfield Christian's averaging 86 points per game in the tournament. The team that can shoot and score. This is the type of team that Jackson Center has a good track record against. Uh, make them play defense, not necessarily hold the basketball, but make sure every possession is a very solid possession. We know about Sosby, we know about Wildermuth, they can score, and of course the role players that are around them. This is the type of team that Jackson Center has a lot of success with. All right, so give me the games you're most looking forward to. You've got a lot to choose from oh, this Oh my week. goodness. Well, first of all, on Tuesday night, that Crestview game, that, that's just an outstanding game when looking how they're going to match up when they play tonight against Lipstick. I'm really looking forward to that particular game. I want to see how Fort Recovery and Perry match up because I think that's another great game. And when that game's over, then what happens with the St. Henry Minster game and who, who wins that first game? 
the things at Wapak and, and what's going on in Division 40 Lida as well, they're just outstanding games right now. And of course, because I'm a Spartan fan, yep. and seeing how they're going to have to go to Toledo and play Whitmer and probably St. John's, you know, in Thursday, Saturday type situation, those are games for me as well. Looking forward to all of those, and a lot of those, if not all of those, can be seen on the West Ohio Sports Network. I hope you've got a couple minutes to take in this rebroadcast schedule because it's a doozy. Yeah. You ready? It begins Tuesday at 10 p.m. on WOSN Fort Recovery versus Perry. That's the D4 district semis from Wapak. Tuesday at 10 p.m. WTLW. You can catch the late game there, Minster and St. Henry. Wednesday at 7, Miller. City versus Lincoln View, D4 district semis from Elida. Wednesday at 8.30, Lipsick and Crestview, the other district semi from the Fieldhouse. Thursday at 7, OG versus Upper Sandusky. That's the Division II district semis from ONU. Thursday at 8.30, Elida and Defiance. Good WBL rematch, Bulldogs versus Bulldogs. Friday at 5.30 p.m., girls action. Fostoria St. Wendelin versus the Arlington Ladies. That's a D4 regional semi. That should be really a good one. Friday at 7 p.m., Spencerville versus Wayne Trace. Division three district semis from Lima Senior. Friday at 8.30. The other one from Spartan Gymnasium, Bluffton versus LCC. Friday at 10.30, Division 4 District Final at Elida. That'll be the winner of Miller City Lincoln View against the winner of Crestview Lipsick. Saturday at 7.30, we'll do the Division 2 Girls Regional Final should Ottawa Glendorf advance from their regional semi earlier in the week. Then Saturday at 9, Division 4 District Final at Wapakoneta, the winners of Fort Recovery Perry and Minster St. Henry. Saturday at 10.30, the Division 2 District Final from ONU, the winners of OG and Upper Sandusky and Defiance and Elida. Saturday at 10.30, WTLW Division 1 District Final from Toledo should Lima Senior advance that far. They have to win Thursday against Whitmer first. And finally, Sunday at 7, the Division 3 District Final at Lima Senior, the winners of Bluffton and LCC against Spencerville, Wayne Trace. Looking forward to all of it next week. Man, we're going to have a lot to break it, down. It's the first of the month. Cash your paycheck. Go to games Tuesday through Saturday. Buy popcorn and enjoy the week. It's and then come back week. and rewatch yeah. them on <laughs> WOSN. Right. Once you can't go to, watch it. Yeah, all right. Well, thanks so much, Mark. Great job as always. That does it for this week's Mark's Madness, and we can't wait to join you again next week.